Hello and welcome to the part 2 of my Amarachi creation series. Today I will be talking about blend shapes. So what you see in the background now is the face rig that I managed to create using the Blender Faceset add-on. So yeah, I had to create 52 blend shapes but if you remember in the last video also, if you didn't see the last video, go and, go and watch it, like just go and watch it. So in the last video, I used um, a base mesh that had some of these expressions already in it. So for this video, I'm going to use all those expressions and create the 52 blend shapes that you'd use for iPhone motion capture. All right, so the first thing I do is to rig the character using the Blender Rigify add-on. It's a rigging add-on that comes inbuilt with Blender. So what you want to do is to go to your preference and enable it in the add-ons. And then you want to use the human rig and then just basically match each bone to the corresponding part of the face. Now for the eyes, what you want to do is get a hold of that eye bone and then use the 3D cursor to position it at the center of the eye wall and make sure to match the rotation. Usually the eyes are rotated about three to five degrees outward. So you want to match the rotation with the bone as well. So yeah, just basically line up all the bones to the corresponding parts of the face and body and then you should be good. So after you've done that, you generate the rig and then parent it. I had an issue where the weights weren't lining up, so I had to follow this tutorial I found on YouTube where... Did I find it on YouTube or did, did I find it online somewhere in some hidden forum? Anyway, so you want to scale it up, scale the rig up as well, parent it and then scale it back down also make sure you've applied the skill after you scaled up and after you've scaled down and then parent it to the rig using either amateur deform or envelope weights now this would give some stepping issues but it doesn't really matter that much because we're not using this particular rig we're just using it to get a basis that we can build upon in zbrush so for the eye bone you're going to want to have both of the eyes separate and have their origin points at the center of each of the eyeballs. Then you select the rig, go to object data properties, scroll down till you see MCH under the bone collections, toggle the visibility. Then you want to select each eye, shift select the armature, control tab into pose mode, and then select this particular eye bone then you hit ctrl b bone you do the same thing for the other eye and then you should have a functioning eye rig after that you can come back to the objects data properties and then hide the mch so that you have a cleaner version of the rig now the reason i've rigged the face first instead of sculpting it in ZBrush immediately is so that I can cheat a little not cheating but so that I can be more accurate because if say for example you wanted to sculpt the expression that said I look right it would be more practical to have the eyes rotating with the rig instead of using the move brush to manually adjust the eyelid to the correct position so I did that for the eyes and for the jaw opening for the rotations of the eyes I looked at reference from Google Images. I also made sure to look up how far the eyes can rotate in each direction. So in ZBrush, you're going to want to have the exact same mesh as the one that you have in Blender. And then turn on layer recording and then you import it into that subtool. So what's going to happen is that you're going to have a new head shape but in a different layer so you can toggle it on and off and it will switch between the two expressions. Using this method I imported all the eye movements and the mouth movements I was able to make in addition to the expressions I already had from the base mesh. So yeah you might be thinking what 52 blend shapes that's a lot i don't think my face can even make 52 expressions and you'll be right it is a lot which is why i've discovered this new um this new application called patience 
because you're going to need a lot of time to make it look good don't get me wrong if you want to go for a more rudimentary version where it uses the blender rig to generate the uh, expressions you can check the face it tutorial to see how you could do that but for this one I wanted my expressions to be more accurate and authentic and follow the proper muscle definitions of the face and that's where this anatomy book I have on the left comes in handy also make sure that your reference is on point because this anatomy book if you don't have it you can always find other reference in images sculpts on art station Pinterest anywhere you look now the good news is that most of the expressions are basically one side of the face and on the other side of the face so say for example this frown that i'm looking at it's basically divided one expression is frown left and the other expression is frown right so you can get away with sculpting the whole thing and then using the morph target to clean up one side and then capturing that in a layer and then clean up the other side and capturing that in a separate layer but what I didn't know here was that in Blender, you can actually make two shape keys work to create a third shape key. So if I was doing this project again, I wouldn't bother trying to make the left work with the right when both are turned on. Instead, I would just make the left look as good as possible and make the right look as good as possible because I can then make a third layer that works as a separate unison... Unison? Unison? You, hmm. a separate combination shape key in blender well anyway i don't have a time machine so i'm going to show you what i actually did for this project basically i had say for example this smile i stored the morph target of the face in a neutral position and then i masked one side and used the morph target brush to clean up that one side and then did the same for the other side so that when i turned on the two layers it would create that one smile and then i adjusted it as much as possible using the edge of the mask as a center line which which is what it is i don't know i'm still telling you this anyway i feathered the mask using the control button because if you click control on the mask it makes it a little more blurred and that way you can use the morph brush to add in some of that detail of the expression so i basically just played with it left and right left and right until it looked good in the final full smile now for the draw down expression you would notice that if you use a rig it will look like a fish which is not how the natural human jaw works because what's happening is that it's taking the vertices of the mouth and it's just translating their position together so it's not stretching the mouth as normal like skin and muscle would, would stretch instead it's taking it as one piece and just i'm doing the motion of the mouth but obviously you guys can see it but it, you can see what it's doing here luckily we have a sort of mouth open expression from the base mesh but it's a bit wide so we want to adjust it into into a more normal jaw down note that i went back and forth with all of the expressions because for this particular expression the jaw down i ended up using a 3d scan of a skull that i got from sketchfab and placed it inside my model i then pushed in all the parts of the skull so it to match my model's face and recreated the jaw hinge movement actually you should try and look for an animation of like the jaw hinging because it doesn't just go down like you'd expect it doesn't just rotate like you'd expect it actually rotates and moves a bit back another reason why the skull inside the head of the model was useful was for expressions like this because in real life except if you're some kind of special person if your eyebrows went up like that your skull wouldn't poke through your head so I made the adjustments after the fact so it would mimic natural skin sliding over the skull. Now you're going to see this and you're going to be like, oh, what is that? Don't be alarmed, it's going to make sense in a second. So this expression is called the mouth closed. And you're thinking to yourself, but that's just the neutral expression. No, this is basically jaw open or jaw swung open but mouth remaining closed 
so this is a combination expression this is meant to be combined with the mouth open to give this expression now luckily this expression is actually in the base mesh that was provided from the 3d scan store so what you're going to do is get that layer store it as a morph target and then switch to the mouth open layer then you're going to use the morph brush and sculpt over the mouth open layer till you get back to that original layer which will give you this layer if you change it from neutral also make sure if you create an expression you turn the layer off before you create the next expression so you basically want to continue like this for the rest of the expressions and make sure you use reference now at this point i decided to draw lines using poly paints over the model for example the wrinkle under the cheek that gets accentuated when you laugh or you frown it's important that that stays the same like the same wrinkle is uh, the same wrinkle is highlighted when you're either laughing or you're frowning so to keep it consistent i drew this line so that if i change the expression from a smile expression to a frowning expression i can see where the wrinkle is actually supposed to be and sculpt in the detail to match it i used this technique all over the face to make everything consistent and it also helped for later on when i was creating the wrinkle maps now you can also do this neck twist I did here but I don't think I used it because uh, I had some complications but if you want to use it you can. So for Z wrapping ahead from texturing XYZ I use these wrinkle lines I created as a guide to help me in matching the points. After I finished with that I made some adjustments to the new mesh but it wasn't really that important because I was going to bake it onto this mesh that I have. So I used X normals and baked the color map, the displacement map and the utility maps. I then went into Photoshop and split the RGB channels of the displacement map into the red, green and blue channels which will give you primary detail, secondary detail and tertiary detail. After all the baking was done, I imported the primary, secondary and tertiary details and applied them on different layers as a displacement. This would give me a fine control over each layer and how I would want it to look. I then used the morph brush to clean up some of the areas that had some artifacts. After this, I used the Damien standard brush to add some more wrinkles the standard brush to give some more volume to some places and overall just go over the model looking for any mistakes or errors and fixing any issues that i found after this was done i then went through each and every expression that i had made previously and then added some of that finer detail into all the wrinkles using the damian standard brush gave the appropriate volumes so that it would look good in close-up shots always remember to use reference reference is your friend after all this was done i exported each of the layers as different shape keys and imported all 52 of them into my blender scene using the join as shape key function in the object data properties menu i then had a bit of fun with testing out different expressions by sliding the values of different shape keys to give me different features so that I would be able to basically stress test this rig that I was going to make. If I saw any errors or two clashing shapes, I could go back into ZBrush, make some corrections and import them back into Blender. Or subsequently, I could use the sculpt feature in Blender and make adjustments there without having to move between different software. So after I had made all the imports and they were all in the right places and they looked good, I used the Face It Blender add-on to generate this face rig. I recommend using this YouTube tutorial that I found online by CG Dive where he goes in depth into how to use the rig for different setups and different types of purposes. Okay. 
so the next video is going to focus on the texturing and the wrinkle maps so ring that notification bell like and subscribe and stay tuned so that i can start getting some of that youtube money all right that will be all for now thank you for watching